Hey guys, it's Neon. We're going to talk about comic books, crowdfunding, Indiegogo, Doug to Naple, and all of that. Holy cow! Uh, no pun intended. I actually haven't checked in on the Earthworm Jim campaign in a couple of weeks, and I had no idea. No idea. It's over $600,000. It was um, about $300,000 the last time I checked in on it, and that was actually doing crazy, crazy good. But I had no idea that this book was at over $600,000. And that's with virtually no press. And we did talk about this on our, our blog, DRES. Now, before we get into the video, please give us a subscribe. If you like the content, we talk a lot about pop culture. We give opinions on pop culture, focused mainly on uh, animation, uh, science fiction, comics, that sort of thing. Uh, we really appreciate it. The channel has grown tremendously in the last couple of weeks, and you guys are really, really awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so we're going to go back to Earthworm Jim. I mean, this is a, a graphic novel origin of Earthworm Jim from Doug to Naple based on the 16-bit video game series, a uh, very classic uh, gaming franchise. And the thing that was weird about this campaign and, uh, you know, I, I called it out when it first launched back in May is that the mainstream pop culture blogs, the video game sites were not talking about it at all. They were not talking about the fact that the earthworm gym campaign did over a hundred thousand dollars in 24 hours on Indiegogo. That's more money than most Kickstarter campaigns, uh, comic book campaigns will ever see. Nobody was talking about it. And I think a lot of it has to do with politics. I think a lot of it is because Doug to Naple is an outspoken conservative Christian creator. Uh, a lot of people don't like him because of that. Uh, but again, I'm like, guys, um, you don't have to like Doug to Naple. You don't have to agree with Doug to Naples politics or his religious beliefs. But the fact that Doug to Naple can... Uh, you know, that he's bringing back Earthworm Jim, which was a huge icon, uh, gaming icon of the 1990s, and that he's been so successful without your help, without you guys promoting his comic at all. Uh, that's newsworthy. That's absolutely newsworthy. And I called, uh, I called a lot of these blogs out and I said, why, when the comic book industry is in such dire straits right now, why are you not mentioning campaigns like Earthworm Jim or uh, Cyber Frog from Ethan Van Skyver. Why are you not mentioning these? Because this is newsworthy. You know, we've got comic book publishers like IDW that are hanging on by their fingertips. Uh, Oni and Lionforge had to merge just to survive in this market because things are so bad. But these guys are out there doing these crowdfunding campaigns and they're making ridiculous money. And they're doing it without the pop culture media helping them. It's, it's strictly word of mouth. Uh, it's, it's using YouTube. It's going to, uh, other media outlets, alternative media outlets. They're bypassing the system. They're not, they don't have the benefit of, uh, like, you know, um, comic book resources or Polygon or, um, you know, IGN or whatever to help them promote. Whereas you see smaller campaigns, uh, getting mentioned all over the place on the comic book blogs, right? Because the, those people, frankly, you know, they know. They know the right people. They have the right politics. I think that's my own personal opinion. These campaigns that are doing so well, um, you know, exist outside of the kind of the, the accepted mainstream comic book industry, even though people who are, uh, you know, publishing this way, you know, very much were part of the mainstream industry at one point. Van Skyver, who worked on uh, DC titles for years, right? Um, Doug Tenaple, who did several graphic novels for Scholastic and worked on several cartoon series. Uh, you know, but it's just it's this weird thing but that you can kind of see in real time how the comic book industry with, you know, it's, it's you know, weird political bent in the, the kind of the political nepotism going on here has sort of destroyed itself. I mean, it really has. And it's it's, it's sad to see. But, you know, hey, these guys are doing really, really well. Um, not everyone's going to do this well, of course, but it, it does show that uh, creators who have a following who put out a decent product are able to make uh, good money, not just enough to get by on, but actual good money. Now, uh, not everyone is happy about it, of course. And, uh, you know, we go out to bounding in the comics because Doug to Naple having the political views that he has, uh, has, has attracted the, uh, the ire of, uh, former comics Alliance editor, Laura Hudson. Um, and it's not just Laura Hudson. A lot of people are, are really upset that, you know, Doug to Naple 
with his uh, conservative beliefs, his Christian beliefs, is doing so well. How dare he? So former Comics Alliance editor Laura Hudson took to Twitter to attack Earthworm Jim creator Doug Tenaple. Hudson describes Tenaple as an openly transphobic troll and erstwhile uh, Breitbart writer. Her attack comes as Tenaple has raised nearly 600000 for an Indiegogo campaign for Earthworm Jim. Uh, we're at 618000 Let me see if I can refresh that. And we're now at 619000 So Hudson specifically took aim at Tenaple's past comments in an interaction with Kotaku writer Heather Alexandra. This has come up multiple times, right? Uh, in these, those comments, Doug referred to Alexander, who is transgender, as a good man. Tenapel also used the pronouns he and him to refer to Alexandra. Uh, Laura Hudson says, listen, I liked Earthworm Jim too, but if you're going to think about funding that Kickstarter, uh, actually Indiegogo, just be aware that you're also supporting an openly transphobic troll and erstwhile Breitbart writer because people are constantly disappointing in the most unnecessary uh, way. So many within the corresponding thread agreed with Laura's opinion on the matter. One user even pointed to other celebrities such as James Wood, uh, Dean Cain, Kevin Sorbo, and John Voigt as disappointing due to their personal and political uh, beliefs. So this is not the first time Tenable has come under fire from a journalist following the announcement of a brand new Earthworm Jim game. Uh, journalist Chris uh, Scullion indicated it would be trickier for him to review it if Doug Tenable was involved. He did create the character. Of course he's going to be uh, involved as an obvious insinuation that he would give the game a bad review because Tenable is involved. Um, you know, and this is where you kind of have to separate the creator from the creation, right? Again, you don't have to uh, like Doug Tenable. You don't have to like Doug Tenable's politics or his uh, religious beliefs. But, you know, again, you kind of have to be, uh, I think, fair when reviewing media. And also, you know, look at, look at, the, like, you know, just because you don't agree with these guys doesn't mean that they're not doing something right. You know, they're making ridiculous money. I mean, for the longest time, the biggest Kickstarters were lucky if they broke 100, 200,000, 300,000. Uh, there were a handful that were over a half a million. Uh, we had one at 1.2 million, Order of the Stick. I don't I don't see that one being replicated um, very easily, but there were a handful that were, you know, a couple hundred thousand. And Indiegogo was always and also ran. Like, people went to Indiegogo if they uh, couldn't do Kickstarter for whatever reason. And, and now, all of a sudden, in the last year, Indiegogo has blown up. Uh, it's blown up tremendously. And now the biggest comic book crowdfunding campaigns a lot of them are on Indiegogo. Um, and, and that happened because uh, certain people were trying to block these guys from being able to put their projects on Kickstarter because, again, of you know conflicting political beliefs. Um, but the industry is starting to notice. Finally, it took them long enough. Uh, we've got, we've got uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. Sean Gordon Murphy, who's uh, you know huge right now in comics. He's like, God, is this the biggest crowdfunded comic ever? You know, is this a record? And it's, it's, it's close. It's close. But he seems like he's completely oblivious to what's going on with crowdfunding right now. And, uh, you know, I, I did tag him in on the article we did. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, it's up there. It's not quite the biggest, but it's up there. Um, but you get down to the bottom of the thread here. And, of course, we've got guys, a massive transphobe that writes for Breitbart. And maybe let's not promote his book. Uh, yeah, I mean, a sample of his comedy at the home of the alt-right is a indication this is a hard pass for me. And that's your decision. You don't have to back his book, you know? I'm just... The point I'm trying to make here is there are people out there making ridiculously good money in comics who are bypassing the system. And by the system, I don't just mean the publishers. I mean the system of journalists and media and all of these news outlets that, that frankly, as far as I, you know, I, I'm concerned, they collude with the publishers to control the comic book industry. They bypassed all of that and they're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars because they're giving people what they want. They're giving them the kinds of comics that they want. And, you know, they really seem to have their uh, finger on the pulse of where the comic book buying public actually is. I mean, you've got your actual audience and then you've got the audience you wish existed or you wish you had i'm sorry six hundred eight hundred thousand dollars for comic books uh that tells me that that your audience is different than the audience that you've been 
uh, pitching projects to. You know, you've got like IDW putting books out that are selling like two or three thousand copies. You know, at, at retail. Um, you've got Boom doing that too with books. Uh, then you have Dynamite. You have Dynamite where you had Twitter tried to. Uh, shame Dynamite because they were working with Christopher Priest and Ethan Van Skyver, and it blew up spectacularly. And they wound up uh, selling, last time I checked, like 130,000 copies of Vampirella number one. You know, uh, Twitter is not the real world. And the sooner the comic book industry realizes that Twitter is not the real world, the sooner, you know, people can get back to making decent livings in the comic book industry again some people have figured out how to do it again you don't have to agree with them but at least give credit where credit is due hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com please subscribe ring the bell for notifications we will talk to you next time